Des Bryant had arguably his best game of the season Monday night, but Chris Carter wasn't as impressed as everyone else. This is what Chris had to say on Undisputed on Thursday. There's only 57 players targeted 90 times this season. All right? Dez is the absolute worst. Okay? Target over 90, 90 times. Only caught 52% of those passes. The worst in the NFL of those people. The worst. I've done some work with Dez and his people and everything. Dez wants someone to be a fan. He wants someone to pat him on the back. But the truth of the matter is, as far as people, they targeted 90, this, 90 targets this year. Dez Bryant is the worst. Okay. Dez then responded on Twitter saying this, quote, man, you a puppet. I'll see you around. Dez then later deleted the tweet and apologized. So Chris, I'll go to you. What do you make of all of this? The tweet, the deleting? Um, I could, I could understand him sending a tweet. I accept his apology, no problem, I accept it. But also I apologize, because he's not the worst. Um, the list was made backwards, so as far as people targeted 90 times, he was the fifth worst okay. this season. But my only issue that I have with Dez, since he was drafted in 2010, has nothing to do with what he's doing right now or even what some people might call a beef is, I had great expectations when they drafted him. I thought that he would really be a, a dominant receiver for a long, long time. I think that Dez is, is limited in some of the things he could do offensively. I thought that he would have advanced as far as his releases, the top of the route, the crispness of which he would run all of his routes. And the, by this time, I thought that he would play more in the slot. So when he came into the league, I thought he had unlimited potential. 2010 out of Oklahoma State, had a lot of baggage coming into the draft. And behind the scenes, I've been a huge proponent of Dez Bryant and the Cowboys keeping him. I believe with the collection of talent that they have now with Dez, and Dez has been injured, especially the first half of the season. If Dez can reach the level he played at in 2013 and 2014, which I thought was going to be a consistent level for him for a long period of time, that's one of the things that makes the Cowboys really, really special going forward. A lot like Seattle. A lot of their defensive players in their 20s um, under contract, so they're going to be able to play a long time. So Dez, Zeke, Dak, that offensive line, and what they have in Dallas is really, really special. But Dez is like a lot of athletes. He doesn't want to be um, criticized. He doesn't want to be critiqued unless you're saying something good about him. Now, because he did something personal and tried to get a message to me, I made, that's very one of the few times as an analyst, um, I've been doing this 15 years, that my response was personal. Mm -hmm. So I don't mean to make it personal. It's stri strictly from an X's and O's standpoint. And I had great expectations for Dez. I think that he can still reach that level of expectation. But this has not been a great year for him, even though it's been an unbelievable year for the Cowboys. All right, so there's something I want to say on this. But first, I just want to go back to you for a moment, just for some context. Mm -hmm. Because Dez was cool with you until the catch in the playoff game. 2014, what, Right? Yes. Like, you guys were fine, and then you went on, when you worked at a different network, yep. you went out and said, hey, that wasn't a catch, and that, that was the, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. That, that was the beginning, and I, I didn't have any issues after that until earlier this season on Undisputed, Skip and Shannon, they asked me about Dez Bryant, and I said he's inconsistent as far as a route runner. He's not a great route runner, which... That's one of my pet peeves as a coach. Not only being an analyst, I'm a wide receiver coach. And how they do things and the overall fundamentals of a receiver, they're very, very important to me. So I, I have a, the ceiling for Dez and the bar very, very high. Higher than I have it for a lot of wide receivers. So that's kind of my problem with it. It's not that Dez complained about it, that I really thought Dez was going to be an elite receiver for a long, long time, and injuries this season have held him back. Okay. So here's my problem with it. Like, Dez Bryant is old enough now that Seven years in the league. That he's got to recognize who wants to help him and who wants to hurt him. And the man I'm sitting next to right here, if you make a list of the best wide receivers in football, more of those guys than not, not only have a relationship with you, but have a really good relationship with you, that you work with them, that might even consider, you know, call you uncle, and that guys that they go to you, one of the greatest to ever play the game, 
and on top of it, comes from a background a lot of these guys did that's dealt with stuff a lot of these guys want to avoid dealing with or maybe are dealing with, and they use you on and off the field when as a resource. When it's convenient and good for them in most cases. Right, right. But, there's, but you have real relationships with guys, and it has helped them. Yes. Des, I get it. I'm not, I have not had the struggles in my family and personal life that Des has. So I'm not casting aspersions to that. I understand he's had a tougher road than I have, but not a tougher road than you. And for Des to not recognize that, hey, here's my allies and my potential allies. Here's how I can reach the level I should be at. Because 2013, 2014, those two seasons, First in the NFL in touchdowns, sixth in receptions, sixth in yards. Those two seasons since then, he's barely in the top 40 in those categories. And you might say, oh, he's missed a lot of games. Those two seasons since then per game, 39th in yards, 63rd in receptions per game these two years. The career is going the wrong way. And I would wish that Dez in year seven would be smart enough to know that it's not it's not because Chris Carter said I didn't catch the ball against the Packers, which, by the way, you're wrong. He did catch it, but that's not the point. <laughs> that was the, that's, how not, got, that's how the beef got that's started. That's how it started, on some petty nonsense, <laughs> on some stuff that if my teenage son got in a beef with a friend of his about uh, that shot was after the buzzer, not before it, I'd say, get over it. Grow up. And it just, I, I, I've been a guy from afar that defended Dez because it always bothered me that when Dez went to the sideline yelling, he was out of control, and when Jason Witten did it, mm -hmm. he was being a great leader. There always seemed to be a double standard there. Mm -hmm. There always seemed to be something else there. And, and Dez's talent is undeniable. Yes. But when you're in year seven, and your best year was year five, and you are not making the most of your physical tools, and your response is to use the Twitter fingers to try to start something with, one of the five greatest players in the history of your position, instead of using him as a resource. And I am a lot of things. I am. Not perfect, but I am a lot of things. But a puppet is not one. Right. And it's just, and it sometimes there are moments that in a in in the grand scheme of things, a tweet, a little, a little comment, a beef between a current player and a former player, those things very often are meaningless. Like, okay, it's stupid. You know what I mean? Like Shaq and uh JaVale McGee don't get along, like whatever, mm -hmm. so what? But sometimes they are the, if you were going to write a book about somebody, that would be the like opening vignette because that one story then explains that and that and that. Right. And, and it's just it's just disappointing. And then Chris, uh, for full disclosure, I've been a Cowboys fan since I was a kid. Okay. Drew Pearson, Lynn Swan, those were the guys who I tried to model my game after. So long before Dez was born, I've been cheering for, for the star on the helmet and number eight on the, 88 on the jersey. When he decided to take number 88, one of my best friends, former NFL great, is Michael Irvin. Mm -hmm. So I thought we were getting the next Michael Irvin. Now, he is the closest thing that the Cowboys have had to Michael since then. So I like Dez. To me, my expectations are just... Hi for him. And I, I, I think the Michael Irvin thing, sorry to interrupt, Christine. I think the Michael Irvin thing is a great guy to bring up, not just because they're both the Cowboys, not just because they both wear 88, but, and tell me if I'm saying this wrong, Michael Irvin was a guy who was not the most physically gifted receiver of his era. He had size, but he was, he was never the fastest player in the league. True. He was never the highest jumper in the league. He wasn't yes. even the highest jumper on his own team. Alvin Harper was. Yes. But Michael Irvin was a guy who, despite off-field stuff, got every last drop every. out of his ability. They had to carry him off the field. It, at, they had to carry him off the field. And if you, if you said to my, if you, before Michael Irvin went to the NFL, said, what is the most he could possibly become, he somehow exceeded that. And for his somehow heir apparent to right now in his career be looking like, if you were to say it before the draft, what is the least a guy with all these physical tools is going to be able to achieve? He's close to that. And it's just, as a football fan, I don't root for the Cowboys. I don't care. Like, right. as a football fan, I root for, as a sports fan, I root for excellence. 
Why do I love LeBron James? Because he's excellent. Why do I, you know, why do I love the athletes that I love? Because I just, I just like to sit on my couch and say, wow, <laughs> those guys are superheroes. And Dez could have, could be that, still could. I don't want to say past tense, but this stuff is nonsense. It, 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 I'm not going to call it nonsense. It is something we will get by. Um, Dez tried to call me. I'm sure I've called him back. I'm sure we're going to talk very, very soon. But the thing about it, it's not a matter of being a football fan. I'm a fan of people, and I'm, I'm, I'm a bigger fan of anyone who had any type of background that is very, very similar to mine. So I go out of my way to try to make sure that they can write some things, and there's a lot of holes to fall in, and I've tried to help Dez from falling into to those holes. And in my day job, I happen to critique wide receivers, well, too. Well, ju just like how it, it is our job to talk about athletes and critique them when we think that's appropriate, they have the right to disagree with what we're saying, but when you take it to a personal level, well, no that's when it becomes Let, an issue. Uh, no doubt. And, I, and I'm actually a supporter of Richard Sherman, sure. barking at reporters. I'm a, but, but I'm also a supporter of, if listen, if I were out here, if it was me, right? If I were out here saying, Des Bryant stinks, his technique's awful, he's not high pointing the ball, and Des wants to say to me, the hell you know about technique and high pointing the Fair. ball? But when some people have a little more credibility on it, and the man to my right's one of those people, and it's just, I hope you guys talk, I hope, I hope that it, that it fixes itself. It'd be better for everybody.